in this lesson, we will solve this question that I have on the screen. So the question says, find the value of current in all resistors of the circuit using total resistance and voltage drop principles. So now let's look at how you are going to solve this question. Okay, so you have to calculate for the value of what current in all the resistors in what in this circuit. Okay. So before you can do that, you first have to know the value of the current in the circuit. That's the total current in the circuit. Okay. So when you know the value of the total current in the circuit, then you will be able to calculate for the what the value of what the current in the various resistors. Okay, so now let's look at how you're going to do that. So to calculate for the total current in the circuit. We will first have to calculate for the effective resistance. So now let's look at how we are going to calculate for the effective resistance of what this circuit. Okay, so looking at the circuit, okay, due to this empty path here, okay, the 5 ohms and then the 7 ohms resistors will be short circuited, which, is, which means that what, no current will flow across this. 5 ohms and then 7 ohms resistors. So, therefore, we can exclude them from what the circuit because of what this path here. Okay, it will create what a path for the, the current to flow through. So, therefore, the current will not flow across the 5 ohms and then the 7 ohms resistor. So, we can what exclude them from what the circuit. So, I redraw this circuit as I'm going to redraw the circuit. Okay, so so this will be the new circuit. So I have the three ohms here, I have the three point five ohms here, I have the four ohms here. I have the one ohm here and then I have what the two ohms here. Then this will be what the 25 volts voltage source. So this will be the circuit now. Okay. So now after being this, you see that what this 3.5 ohms resistor and then the three ohms resistors are what in a series connection. So therefore, you can find an equivalent resistance for these two resistors. So we can see that they are in a series connection. So therefore, the equivalent resistance for the 3.5 and then the 3 ohms resistor would 3.5 plus what 3 and then that would be equal to 6.5. So what this means is that instead of using two resistors of resistance values 3.5 and then 3 ohms, we can use a single resistor out with what a resistance of what 6.5 ohms. Okay, so we have to withdraw the circuit. Okay, so now I have the circuit to be Let me draw this here. Okay, then. Okay, so this will be the six point five ohms. This will be the four ohms. This will be the one ohm. And then this will be what the two ohms resistor, and this is the 25 volt voltage source. So this is the circuit now. So from the circuit that you have now, you will see that what the two ohms resistor, four ohms resistor, and then the 6.5 ohms resistor is what are in a parallel connection. So therefore, you can find an equivalent resistance for what these three resistors. So now let's look at that. So since they are in a parallel connection. The equivalent resistance okay will be equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 6.5 all to the power of negative 1. So now let's look at the value of this. So sum now the values in the bracket that was 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 6.5. So that will be equal to what? 47 over 52 to the power of minus 1, and this will be equal to 52 divided by 47 ohms. 
So that will be one, the equivalent resistance for the 2 ohms, 4 ohms, and then the 6.5 ohms resistance. So from here, you are going to redraw the circuit. So now let's look at how the circuit will look like. Okay, so now we have the circuit to be okay, it's not really cool. Okay, so now this the circuit now. So we have the one ohm resistor, we have the 50 to 47 ohms resistor here. So now we can find what the equivalent resistance of what the circuit. So here you see that what the one ohm resistor and then the 50 to 47 ohms resistors what are in what in a series connection. So therefore, the total resistance for the circuit is what one plus 52 and what 47. So signing up this, I have what 47 here. Then I have what 47 plus 52. So this will give me the value of what 99 divided by 47 ohms. So that will be the equivalent resistance for what this circuit. So now that you know the total resistance for the circuit, you can now calculate for the, what, the total current in the circuit. So that will be what, what is equals what current times what resistance. Okay, so the current will be equal to what voltage over what the resistance. Okay, and we know the voltage in the circuit is what 25 volts divided by the effective resistance that was 99 divided by 47. Okay. Let me clear some space so that we continue. Okay, so now from here, okay, we have what I to be equal to 25 times what 47. Divided by what? 99. That gives us what? I. That gives us I to be equal to what? 1175 over what? 99 amperes. So this will be what? The total current in the circuit. I'm going to write this in two decimal places. So that will be equal to what? 11.87 amperes. Okay, so now you find for what? The total current in the circuit. So before we continue, let's label the current across what each of the resistors in the circuit. So I name this current here as what I1, here as what I2, and then it will be I3, it will be I4, it will be I5, and then it will be I6, and then I7. Okay, so now let's continue. So from this circuit here, okay, you see that what we found the total current to be what 11.87 ampere, okay, and that same kind of flow across what this one ohm resistor and then this 52 ohms, 47 ohms resistor. So, therefore, you can see that what the current across what this one ohm resistor is what 11.87, and that current was labeled as what I2, okay, so. We know what I2 to be equal to 11.87 amperes. Since the total current in the circuit will flow out through this one ohm resistor. Okay, so now let's calculate for the what the value of what the remaining current in the various resistors. Okay. So to continue, we are going to what, apply the voltage drop principle here okay so we are going to apply the voltage drop principle okay so to do this you know the current in the one ohm resistor to what 11.87 amperes okay so therefore you can copy the voltage drop across the one ohm resistor and from the voltage drop principle, we know that what the total voltage will be equal to the sum of the voltage drops across each of the resistors. 
So I'll take the voltage drop across the 50 to 47 ohms resistor towards V2, and then the voltage drop across the 1 ohm resistor towards V1, and then the total voltage is what V. So if I want to find V2, V2 will be equal to what V minus what V1. Okay, and you know V2 is what 25 volts, but I don't know V1 yet. So let's find the value of what V1. I know V1 is the well, for the voltage across what, the 1 ohm resistor. Okay, so to calculate for the voltage across this 1 ohm resistor, that would be one will be equal to what, 1 times what 11.87. And this will give us what V1 to be equal to 11.87 volt. Okay, so now that you know V1, we can come and write it here. Okay, so now you can calculate for the, what, the value of what V2. So we now have what V2 to be equal to what 25 minus what 11.87. So now 25 minus 11.87 give me the value of what 13.13 volts. So that was the voltage drop across what the 52 or 47 ohms resistor. Now let's clean up some space so that we continue. Okay, so now we apply the voltage drop principle to find the voltage across what the 52 and what 47 ohms resistor. Okay, so coming back to this circuit here, okay, you know that what you got this 52 and 47 by what finding an equivalent resistance for the 2 ohms, the 4 ohms, and then the 6.5 ohms resistors. Okay, so therefore we can change this circuit here, okay, back to what, what we have here. Okay. So what that means is that since we got this 52 over 47, okay, from this 2 ohms, 4 ohms, and then 6.5 ohms resistor, since they're in a parallel connection, then the voltage drop across this 52 and 47 ohms resistor will be the same as what the voltage drop across what each of the resistors, 2 ohms, 4 ohms, and then what the 6.5 ohms, because what they are in what in a parallel connection, and then they are equivalent. Resistance was what the 52 was 47. So therefore, the voltage drop across this resistor here will be small as what the voltage drop across what each of the resistors I have here, which is the 2 ohm, the 4 ohms, and then the 6.5 ohms resistors. So therefore, I consider what the voltage drop across these 2 ohm resistor, okay, which are named what V sub 2 ohms okay will be equal to what 13.13 13 volts and then the voltage drop across this 4 ohms resistor will also be also what 13.13 13 volts and then the voltage drop across the 6.5 ohms resistor will be 13.13 13 volts because they are what in a parallel connection okay so now instead of what you know the voltage drop values across what the 2 ohms resistor, the 4 ohms resistor, and then the 6.5 ohms resistor. So now you can therefore calculate for the, the value of what the current across what each of these resistors. So now let's do that. So calculating for I1, okay. I1 will be equal to what V2 ohms divided by what 2 ohms. Okay, first I calculate for the what the value of the current across all these two ohms resistor here. And you know the voltage across all the two ohms resistor to be what 13.13 13 volts. So therefore we have what I want to be 13.13 divided by what the two ohms. So let's see the value of this. So 13.13 13 divided by the two. Okay, let me move the ohms from there. Divided by the two will be equal to 6.565 amperes okay so that was the value of what i1 so therefore we found what i1 to be equal to i write this in your two decimal place so that was 6.57 amperes so that's what the value of what i1 okay so now you can find what the current value across what the four ohms resistor also which will be what I3. So now let's look at how I'm going to find I3. 
okay so to find i3 we know that what the voltage drop across what this 4 ohms resistor is what also what 13.1 13 volt okay so i3 will be equal to what v4 ohms divided by what the 4 ohms what resistor and this will be equal to what 13.13 13 divided by what 4 so let's divide of what i3 so 13.13 13 divided by 4 will be equal to what 3.2825 so therefore what we have i3 to be equal to what 3.28 amperes okay i wrote it in what two decimal places so now that you know the current value out across what the 4 ohms resistor let's copy for the words current value across what this is 0.5 ohms resistor here okay so now let's look at what you are going to do now so you see that what we got this 6.5 ohms resistor here by combining with the 3.5 ohms and then these 3 ohms resistor here since they are what in the series connection so what this means here is that the current across what this 6.5 ohms resistor will be this much of the current flowing through at this 3.5 and then this 3 ohms resistor so therefore when you find the current across what the 6.5 ohms resistor that will be the current across what these two resistors here so let's look at how i'm going to find the current across what this 6.5 ohms resistor so let's see that current is what i 4 comma what 5 okay then name it i4 comma what 5 so that will be equal to what v6.5 divided by what 6.5 so that will be what 13.13 13 divided by what 6.5 so 13.13 13 divided by 6.5 will give me the value of what the current is what 2.02 so that was the current across what this 6.5 ohms resistor here and it's that same current that flow across the 3.5 ohms resistor and then the 3 ohms resistor so therefore we see that what i4 equals 2.02 amperes and then i5 equals what 2.02 amperes and looking at i6 since the resistor there was short circuited it means no current flow through so the current there was 0 amperes and then same for what i7 also okay so that's all for this question